So Larry Flint, David Eisenbach, uh, you're a historian. That's right. You're a cultural icon. Publisher. Publisher, yes. Publisher Larry Flint. The, the name of the book is One Nation Under Sex. We're encouraged to entertain the delusion that the sex scandal in politics is the exception, not the rule. This book really dives in directly and says, no, in fact, the sexual themes behind American politics are historically decisive, and they've been with us since the beginning. Mm -hmm. Any surprises here, Larry? Uh, no, I, I think Lincoln was a big surprise, and getting the confirmation that Jefferson actually fathered six children by a slave girl, Sally Hemings. Uh, although people knew a little bit about the story, we didn't really get it confirmed by DNA until 1988. The first gay president in being Buchanan. I didn't know that when I went to work. <laughs> Let's back up. We've got a few it. headlines there. Uh, you know, the Hemming story, I think, is is the best known of the three you've just mentioned. But, uh, David, what, what about Lincoln? Well, Lincoln definitely liked to sleep with men, and uh, historians acknowledge that. But traditionally, they've said, well, it was just because there wasn't enough beds on the frontier. Well, it, it turns out that not only did Lincoln uh, sleep with men on the frontier, uh, but he shared a bed with Joshua Speed, who was the heir to a southern plantation with 70 slaves, had plenty of money. At the same time, Lincoln was a state legislator and a successful lawyer. The two of them had enough money to sh buy their own beds, but they shared a bed for four years. Uh, and then when Lincoln was president, he invited another man to share a bed with him, Captain David Derrickson. Uh, so clearly it's not a matter of not having enough beds around it's lincoln liked to sleep with men and now, what, is this a, a michael jackson kind of thing well or what, is this is he actually gay i mean what they actually did in bed of course we don't know uh but what we saw uh, mr flint and i when looking at the letters between abraham lincoln and joshua speed is a, a number of things that are quite telling one both share this tremendous anxiety about getting married and Lincoln doesn't get married until his mid-30s, which was incredibly old uh, for those days. For those days. And uh, according to all of Lincoln's, um, uh, about over a dozen of Lincoln's contemporaries when he was young, he didn't like to spend time with girls. Uh, and his relationship with his wife was certainly uh, fraught. Tough one, yeah. That was a, that was a complex one. So, so when you put all these things together, it, it does indicate that he was ambivalent about uh, women. I would say, Larry Flint, that uh, among the the... the, the people who live on this planet, you would be uh, among the most difficult to shock. But I sense that the Lincoln details shocked you. Uh, not not so much as people like Harding and Wilson, you know. Uh, well, let's get to Harding. Let's let, let's get to Warren Harding. I, it's certainly well known of, of anybody who lives in Washington for any period of time or knows politics that, that Harding was something of a philanderer. But uh, the details that you uncover here uh, even, uh, you know, sharpen that picture a little bit. Well, it, it said about Wilson and Harding that Wilson preferred the brothels of Paris and that Harding preferred the whorehouses of uh, Columbus, Ohio. But uh, <laughs> I think it was a toss-up between Jack Kennedy and, uh, and Warren Harding who actually bedded the most women in the White House. In the White House. Uh, yeah, now, you know, you're a, a professor at Columbia, right, David? That's right. Um, how do you get into a collaboration with uh, Larry Flint and maintain your uh, academic integrity? Uh, you know, w worry that you're not doing something that's more of entertainment value than historical value? Well, m part of my, my whole uh, mission has been to open up uh, the historical uh, interest and get more people interested. And, uh, and one of the ways when I'd be teaching classes is talking about the stories of these private lives of presidents. And something I realized was that it's not just private, that actually the sex lives and the affairs often had incredibly important impact on uh, history and political history. And that was the key to this book. This is a serious book. Uh, it's got some titillating stories in it, but at the end of the day, we see that wars, uh, elections, and economic policies often turn on uh, sexual affairs. What, um, and we're talking with David Eisenbach, history professor at Columbia University, co-author of One Nation Under Sex, How the Private Lives of Presidents, First Ladies, and Their Lovers Changed the Course of American History, co-written with the free speech advocate and Hustler magazine publisher Larry Flint. Um, how would you say, give me two examples of, say, how history was changed by the sexual proclivities of uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson. 
Well, Woodrow Wilson, uh, not only did he have an affair that almost sunk his chances at winning the presidency in 1912, uh, but shortly after his wife died in 19, August of 1914, he met uh, Edith Galt, uh, whom he fed, uh, fell head over heels in love with her. And as they began to uh, date and he began to court her, uh, it, the story got into the press. Uh, and so this was just a few months after his w w first wife dies. Uh, that he decides he's going to marry Edith Galt. Now, Edith Galt uh, became his main advisor, and she wind, winds up becoming essentially his chief of staff at a time when women did not have the right to vote, at the time when America was on the verge of the First World War. All right, all right. Okay, Larry Flint, good idea to have an advisor be someone that you fall in love with? Bad idea. Uh, oh, oh, uh, bad idea. Yeah, you have some experience in that regard. Not not in the White House, but uh, in, in terms of uh, your ability yeah, to be yeah, advised. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the key here is that when Wilson has a par uh, paralyzing stroke uh, and he is incapacitated, uh, she takes over the White House and serves wow. essentially as president without the press knowing, the vice president knowing, Congress knowing. And this is at the pivotal moment when the Senate is voting on the Treaty of Versailles that would have committed the United States to the League of Nations. But Edith refuses to compromise on the Treaty of Versailles, and Wilson is in no capacity to compromise. And as a result, instead of the vice president coming in, uh, Thomas Riley Marshall, and compromising with the Senate to get that passed, the, Ameri the United States does not join the League of Nations, and, of course, the rest is history. The professor tells a good story, Larry. Flynn. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Why do you think I hooked up with him? I, nobody, no, I knew nobody would want to read a history book written by a professor. Pornography, anyway, you know. Well, the the one uh, I think resource, uh, and you bring many to the table here, but the one resource I think that uh, we can put to you is compared to the, the the stories of Bill Clinton, the impeachment, the Monica Lewinsky affair. I mean, these are tawdry contemporary sexual episodes compared with what you found uh, historically. Yes, we live in boring times. Uh, no, that's that's true. You know, even if we just go back and look at Ben Franklin, who was published in a newspaper or tabloid during that period of time, and he used to have a sex advice column. He even wrote a thesis on uh, the attributes of making love to older women. Really? A and penny saved is a penny you could use at the whorehouse, yeah. I guess, would be what Ben Franklin And, said. of course, you know, as our ambassador to Paris, we badly needed <laughs> the financial support of the French, and, and uh, Franklin had his way. And it was his reputation as a ladies' man that kind of uh, was enabled him to sell the cause of American freedom to the French people and the French court. I mean, he slept with the right women, turned out. Now, let me put this to you, David Eisenbach. I mean, do your students or maybe even the faculty committees up there at Columbia, do they have any concern that you're completing Larry Flint sentences <laughs> about American history and sexuality? You know, uh, you know, life's too short to worry about tenure. Uh, I'm, I, we had a lot of fun. I think we found the very important uh, made a very important contribution to history, serious history. Uh, so I, I'm just happy to have Mr. Flynn as my friend. One more example here. Um, I was fascinated by uh, Andrew Jackson. A, an affair in the story of Andrew Jackson caused him to do some things which destroyed the chances for a, a person who towers in American history from uh, really having a chance at being president. Can you tell that story? Uh, the John C. Calhoun. Right. Uh, right, exactly. Uh, there was a divide in the Jackson administration uh, between John C. Calhoun uh, and members of the cabinet uh, who refused to uh, invite uh, Peggy Eaton, the wife of John Eaton, the Secretary of War, to their parties because Peggy Eaton had a checkered past. She right, was right, right, uh, right, considered right. an American Jezebel uh, because uh, she married John Eaton. Uh, while her husband was away at sea, and, and he killed himself, and shortly thereafter she marries John Eaton. Scandal, so there's a scandal. It becomes this yeah. outrageous national scandal. And Andrew Jackson resents that John C. Calhoun is not inviting Peggy Eaton uh, and his right-hand man, John Eaton, to their parties. So he dumps uh, John C. Calhoun from the presidential ticket in the, the, the second administration. He nominates uh, Martin Van Buren, his secretary of state, uh, to be his new vice president. Calhoun then returns to South Carolina where he becomes a firebrand for secession. And if you remember, se the secession movement was born in South Carolina. 
So uh, while the sex scandal, of course, does not start the Civil War, it is an essential piece of the story of how we became uh, involved <laughs> in the amazing. Civil War. See why I hooked up with him? Yeah, no, good work, good work. So are your favorites, though, Larry Flynn? they got to be the Kennedys, right? Uh, yeah, and I grew up during that era, and I, it was really sad and it was really tough, you know, doing the work we did on the Kennedys because... <clears throat> In essence, to make a long story short, uh, Kennedy was very careless and didn't very well plan a lot of the, the affairs that he was having. And he preferred the ones that got the most attention, which was the showbiz type, like Marilyn and Angie Dickinson, and Marilyn and Dietrich, and Candy Bergen, people like that. But <clears throat> Jackie also had her affairs. While he was alive. No, you learn about that in this. And place. after he died, so it's. I was part of the Kennedy mystique. You know, growing up and where you loved your country, you felt you could do better, and it was the feel-good generation. You know, nice to, to quite and, literally feel and, good. And and to get the bubble burst like that. Not, and I don't, I'm not trying to sound, sound puritanical because I'm the first guy to defend a philandering president. I think if you can fight two wars and balance the budget at the same time, you should be able to sleep where you want to. But I'm just saying that I think more discretion was called called for by President Kennedy. That is and the certainly part of the tragedy. And the, and the tragedy of it is J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI director, who was into everybody's sex life, used one of Kennedy's many sex scandals to force Kennedy into giving him the go-ahead to bug and wiretap Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. And then he used Martin Luther King Jr.'s affairs against him to persecute him and his wife. The sexual theme once again. It, once again. Do you think, uh, finally, uh, in this week of a royal wedding, do you think America's puritanical uh, past and its sexual repressed past that you write about in this book uh, makes it uh, better for the United States, or would it be would it be better if we had like a royal family that we could put all of our kind of uh, sexual scandals? Uh, I don't, I think when it gets right down to it, I'm not sure that Brits want a royal family. Uh, that was really brought into question with Princess Di. Uh, but you know, I look at it this way: if they want it, so be it. I'm just glad that America is not a monarchy, you know. And I, it does appear that they want it. They want the it. monarchy. Yes. Yeah, they, they they get into all that that pomp and circumstance. And, yeah. Uh, so let them have it. Well, uh, David Eisenbach, uh, history professor at Columbia University, co-author of One Nation Under Sex: How the Private Lives of Presidents, First Ladies, and Their Lovers Changed the Course of American History co-authored with Larry Flint, who has changed the course of American history, free speech advocate, Hustler Magazine publisher, uh, and co-author of the same book. Larry, thanks so much. Thank you, John. Professor, Thank you guys you. are quite a team. <laughs> you should go on the road. <laughs> We're planning on it.